Just a dude standing in front of a screen asking the print gods to love him. <laughs> <laughs> Squeegee and Ink Podcast Season 2. This podcast is sponsored by Blind Maggot, Magna Colors, Screen Print World, Target Transfers, and Adobe Creative Suite. I'm Pav. Um, Pav is actually my nickname. It's not my real name. My real name is Luciano. I'm a screen printer down in the southeast of England. Um, uh, in a company called Dog Awesome Co. Printworks. Uh, that's it. I'm just, just a dude. Yeah. Just a dude standing in front of a screen asking the print gods to love him. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. so funny. It went, like yesterday or the day before, so I was like, oh, if you, you got a different person who could print this job? And I was like, yeah, so that you could have old Elton's or you could have Doggos, and they're like, so spell out Doggos, and I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, I still can't do it with a straight face, but yeah. So how, how are you finding, like, because last time I spoke to you, I'm sure you were part-time building up Doggos and part-time working. Yeah, um, I'm still I'm still doing that. Yeah. Um, things have escalated. Uh, particularly in the past sort of well since January really oh cool um, yeah quite dramatically escalated um my um I basically just bumped into a bloke um and I was just chatting away to him as you do you know you chat and you talk about things you like and I was just sort of um, I'm into printing I do a lot of screen printing and he said oh I used to have a print shop and he told me what print shop it was and it's a print shop that I used to like really really want to go and see like mm. I can't say who it is but I'll explain that in a minute and um, I was like, oh, you guys have you guys have closed down? He's like, yeah, he said I just had enough of it, so I closed down. He said, oh, he said, if you ever want to need oh, what's the problem? Can you hear me? The microphone wasn't there. He said, if you ever want to um if you ever yeah. want to any inks or anything, I've got loads of ink if you want if you want to buy it. Huh. So I said, oh cool, yeah, what is it? He said, oh, it's just just the plastic a bit of water based and that. So I said, yeah, I'll pop down. So I popped down, it's only 20 minutes up the road. And there were 300 pots of plastisol <laughs> ink. Yeah. And there was about 70 screens, um, basically his entire screen room. God. And I took all of it. <laughs> like, all of it. Yeah. I was like, well, now, now, now's the time to scale up. So I basically ended up with, it's all union ink and stuff, all, all, the, all the good stuff. Ah, and and yeah. yeah, and I took all that. And he said, if you ever want to do some printing for me, let me know. So then I... Then I messaged, I messaged him saying, oh, if you need, you know, if you need anything, I will, I will do some printing for you. He said, yeah, can you do this job quickly? And that was in January. And I did it and punched it out and got it to him by the weekend. And he's like, yeah, cool. I'll just use you from now on. So he's basically kept all his old customers. Really? Just funneling them through And he's just funneling them all the way through me. I've accidentally become a contract printer. There's a long and the short of it. Um, but he just goes, yeah. So, yeah, he said, do you want to do this job? And he, the huge jobs he sends on elsewhere. He said, yeah, do you want to do this one? He just gives me the, the like, pick and choose which ones I want mm. to do. Mm. Most of them for brands and things. Um, yeah, so it's just sort of, that's all I do now. I don't really, I take on the odd bit of work here and there for myself. But I've accidentally become a contract printer. Yeah. Um, but in yeah. a good way. It's like, how, yeah. how did you, so does, because obviously he knows about pricing and all of that. So what yeah. does, how does that work? How do you figure that out with somebody who really knows about that? Um, <laughs> it's actually easier. Like yeah. he know he knows where I need to be to be making any sort of decent money. Uh, he knows where he needs to be to be making money. But the way we worked it is he he makes the money on the garment and I make the money on the printing. So mm. it's like I don't have I'm not making as much money per job, but I've got mm. more work than I'll ever ever yeah. need. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, literally, I'm doing. He's got two surf shops again. I, I, this is the annoying thing. I can't share any of it because it's <laughs> he's. Yeah. He hasn't told these people that he hasn't got a print shop anymore. So I'm <laughs> I'm covering ah. all of his jobs. So I can't, I've been doing untold amount of jobs and I can't share them on Instagram or anything. Really yeah. cool stuff. Yeah, but he, yeah, so he's just, do you want to do this job? And I'm like, yeah, cool. And I have, I mean, sometimes I'm doing 1,500 to 2,000 prints a week for Jesus. him. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, probably the same design, right? And like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. relatively yeah. easy. Yeah, that's what's good or? because it because he because he's a he's been a printer and he knows what what the coup is. He sends jobs to me. He's seen my setup. He knows what I'm you know physically capable of. So he sends stuff to me, going like, "Do you want to do this one? Two hundred and fifty piece order, single color across three different colors of garments." Yep, cool. Bosh, done. 
and then the next one and they just roll through and a lot of them will repeat orders can you do another 50 mm. for this person 100 for this person yada 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 so i get all the joy of printing uh some of the money and none of the hassle of dealing with any customers perfect <laughs> oh. it is when you hear people talk about contract printing it all sounds like doom and gloom but it's for me it's probably the best the best of both worlds for me because i get to do all the fun bit and none of the shit bit yeah, because you're not having to bid on pricing it out. No. Like he understands that if he wants to keep you long term, he has mm. to, mm. you know, pay you a bit, and then it makes it easy for him. So he's got someone to pass it. Yeah, to. it was. It, there was there was a, a small um a tactical part on my on my side as well. When I went to go and see the ink, we negotiated a price for it. I said, I'm not going to just take it for nothing. I'll give you some money for it. He said, Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. I said, Well, look, whatever whatever we decide. How about other? I just take. 10% off any bill if I print for you. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. So there's an incentive for him to keep sending stuff to me to get yeah. his money back for all this ink that I've screwed away. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. I wonder what happens to a lot of these businesses because do you think people build print businesses thinking that they'll sell them when they retire? And then really what they're looking at is just like a customer book and some inks and a little bit of equipment, but it's not like a business business that you can just sell on. And yeah, I is... think it would be optimistic to assume that people are that forward thinking in the industry that we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. It, I think a lot of us do it for the love of the you know, the art and the craft of doing it. Yeah. And um yeah, thinking about what might happen 30 years later really is a doesn't happen, I don't think, very much. Yeah. No, it's true. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's tricky. Do you know what I've been doing all weekend? I am beyond tired. I've like um, you've been you've been sorting your shop out, haven't you? Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> I just Congratulations had to get on your shop, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone's congratulating me like I've had a kid or something, but it's very it's kind. Like, it's like a ba- it's like a baby, but the baby has a business uh, baby. <laughs> doors and windows um, <laughs> and clothing inside it. Well, most yeah. babies don't have those. They have organs uh, and skin. Uh, no, I've just got t-shirts. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's full on, but we had to just bloody... Yeah, we could wait until it's perfect or have a till system set up, but we just had to open up and see what happens. But no, it's been a really good first weekend. Uh, I think that's the best way to do things. If you wait, sometimes you just wait until something's perfect. It, it never happens. And I've always been of the mindset that done is way better than perfect. Because um, mm. if some, once you finish something, you can always perfect it afterwards. So yeah, yeah. Just, just cracking on and, and rattling it out is, there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah, I've never met someone who calls himself a perfectionist who I like. So there you go. Yeah, I'll just. <laughs> I think it's difficult to be a perfectionist. Work, work. Aside, aside from anything else, who defines what the perfection is? Like you, you're defining it for yourself. And the, my mm. my theory behind that is, if I'm defining what the perfection is of this job, then I, I can just turn around and go, "Yeah, it's perfect." As far as I'm saying, it's perfect. Then it's done. <laughs> yeah. That now, yeah, no, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, uh, we are overly critical of ourselves as printers as well, aren't we? I think that's that's, yeah. that's part of it. Yeah, that is part of it. I know um, you got to learn to be nicer to yourself. Yeah, I I like all your developments recently. So you've done like quite a few tweaks, haven't you? Like I've seen that you've done yeah. the heat the heat monitor on the flash. You have yeah. got lasers. Yeah. Um, what was the other thing you did? Uh. Uh, got an embroidery yeah, machine. <laughs> oh yeah, the embroidery machine the other day. <laughs> Tell me yeah. about the embroidery machine, like why you put it off and like what's making you want to do it and stuff. I had absolutely zero intention of ever getting into embroidery. Mm. Um, well, that's a lie. Before I went to the first print where I met you, my intention was to go there and look at embroidery machines and you know maybe roll it into the business somehow. Um, purely because people ask it all the time and I'm just fed yeah. up of bouncing the money down the road. Mm. Um, and then we went to Printware, and the second I walked into that to the NEC and heard the noise of the embroidery <laughs> machines, I was like, "I can't fucking do this. There's no way. There's no way." It was like a jackhammer. Yeah. And I was obviously amplified, so I had no intention of getting an embroidery machine. And then this guy I'm doing the printing for, I happened to go to his workshop, and there's this embroidery machine sitting in the corner. And I said, "What did you use that for?" And he used to get basically get. He'd do his own samples made up for his big customers. Once they approved it, he'd send the the whole job off elsewhere. Mm. And uh, he said, "We can buy it if you want." And I thought, "No, I won't buy it." And then I looked at it, and it's done in in five years or four and a half years. It's done 
400 hours of work. So it's done mm. less than 50 days in five yeah. years, which is actually somehow less work than I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and, and it was at a price I couldn't really turn down. Um, so I just thought, fuck it, I'll just buy it. So I just yeah. bought it. And uh, it's going to be a learning curve. But I'm going to, whereas with all the printing stuff, it's difficult to like share it all because of the way things are going, um, which is why I've been sharing all my little tinkering. With this, I think, because it's going to be, it's mainly a little passion thing for me, the embroidery thing. I'm going to sort of keep it as a little thing I can update people on with my little stories and what's going on and whatnot. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, we just had a revelation recently because we've had a long term standing digitizer person. Mm. And then I thought, oh, do you know, I'll just try out David Sharp and pay. So everyone tells me to go to. Um, well, it's because he's like, I don't even know where he ships it off to, but, and that's like, fuck, this is a lot of money for a tiny little embroidery, like this little chess piece. Mm. And it was about 20, no, it was about 15 quid in the end compared to mm. about six. And I was like, God, is it going to be worth it? And it is. It's worth is it? paying it makes for. that much difference? Yes. So okay. I initially thought that like all these weird little breaks and like needle breaks and not even needle breaks, thread breaks and like stopping in there. Oh, when the embroidery machine like turns off when you've just walked away from it. I thought that was just the machine or me not hmm. knowing how to set up the machine. It's not that. It's this bloody file. So they just... They strip out all the excess threads that aren't needed mm. and that makes it run faster with less thread. And then they just know how to do it so that it has less um, trims and things. And you're like, okay, I've just done like 30 tops with not even one thing and I'm just having to replace the bobbin. And I'm like, God, how many hours have I wasted from trying to save like a tenner? I wonder how many embroidery machines are for <sighs> sale purely because people have had, to, had it up to the up to the neck in it and it's yeah. just that they're digitizing is dog shit <laughs> yes because like print files you can tell if they're dog shit like you could tell really easily if a vector file is dog shit because you mm, just yeah. select it and if it's got ten thousand vector points you're like oh this is horrible or mm. in 20 layers you're like oh this guy doesn't know what they're doing or you could tell if they've auto traced it but yeah embroidery files if you've come from screen print how do you know about that i don't know yeah I did look at like the software and that for it, but I I haven't got enough hours in the day as it is mm. without getting involved with all of that. And it just seems like paying this guy to do it is the right thing to do. Um, I think yeah. so. That's, um, it's an adventure. Yeah. I, I get also the thing is I will definitely pay for David Sharp or someone to do the brand ones where I've got to do like 50, 100 for myself. Mm. But if it is a customer and you only needed 15, I might still go for the cheap, cheap guys. Nah, spend the money. Always spend the, the money. Well, yeah, I'm, the probably, I'm probably the wrong person rate. to ask. I, I am so frivolous with money. It's unreal. <laughs> I'm the worst person to ask. <laughs> the absolute worst. But yeah, yeah, just do it. Just spend yeah. it. And do it fine. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I bought my embroidery machine with actually zero plan on how to pay for it. I still yeah. haven't paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I just went, oh, I'm coming to pick it up. Okay, cool. Picked it up and I still haven't paid for it. It's just sitting really? there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm <laughs> hoping, I'm hoping if I patent my laser system, then yeah. uh, I can sell a few of those. Yeah. And get, get that covering, get that covering the cost of it. Yeah. Tell me about the laser system though, because you've just figured that out. Is that based off other pre existing things that other people have made? No. No, you just I um out. I looked at some others that people have made. Some people they mount them to the ceiling or mount them, you know, whatever. And I was like, I need one something attached to the press. And you know, I've got my, my cruisers in now, mm. so um yeah, that, that's that's all up and running. My extension still isn't done. Um, <laughs> that's had to be put on the back burner for for various reasons. Um, but yeah, the cruisers in. And I was like, a lot of the jobs I do now, I'm doing really wafty size runs. So I'm doing from extra small like kids extra small all the way up to the, the double XL. Mm. And in particular, I'm doing a lot of chest prints on hoodies. And I thought it'd be really handy just to know exactly where that print's going to land every time I slide a hoodie on. So mm. I was like, lasers, let's sort some lasers out. So that sent me down the rabbit hole. And then when I installed my cruiser, I dropped it. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's like proper, you said straight, straight, straight. And yeah, then... <laughs> yeah, proper fucks it. Um, and it, and, and I was like, I'll, I'll keep that bit. I'm one of these people I can't throw a piece of metal away, so I kept it. 
And the hull is obviously the perfect size for all of the nuts that are on the cruiser. Mm. And the centre, the centre actor, I was like, I bet that nut fits right through the hole on that. So I cut the straight bit off, and I just used that to build everything off of. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and it runs so off a got... USB pack and everything. Does that mean one whole head of your cruiser is non-functioning now? No, it's no, it, 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 it's bolted to the the centre pin of the cruiser. You know, the centre, oh, okay. the centre disc. I just took the took the nut out, put it on top of the centre disc, and put the and put it back in again. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's probably saved me ruining God knows how many, God knows how many sweatshirts and things, mm. and also for like the left chest prints, and it saves me having to. If I'm doing a left, if I'm doing an order where again a lot of them run from extra small all the way up to the double X, double triple XLs, it means I can adjust exactly where it's going to land on the platen and not have to change from the kids' platens to the adult platens. Oh right, yeah, that's really saved me a lot of time. So I'm not having mm-hmm. to like take them all off, line them all up, and start again. I'm just literally just adjusting the lasers up as to where, rather than where the print's going to hit, I adjust the lasers up as to where the garment, where the the neck needs to needs to meet and the side needs to meet and then bosh and it just lands straight there yeah and there's no there's no downtime for for setting up the setting up the patterns again yeah I suppose that's like a real benefit if you're predominantly doing retail stuff isn't it yeah so don't normally have that massive size range yeah I've got a shit it, it, I mean some of them some of these little kids hoodies they actually barely fit on the kids patterns I'm stretching them like to get them on <laughs> if if my friend's listening I'm not stretching them I promise there. <laughs> They fit that's not perfectly. Walks, that's, yeah. uh, that's just the way the text goes. Like, oh, I, had, <laughs> it's on I had one job, and it was a one of my least favorite things to do, regardless of what the garment is, what the color is, is if the design is a perfect circle. <laughs> and I yeah. looked at it, and it was on these thin T-shirts, and I looked at it, and I was like, I'm really not looking forward to peeling that off of there because yeah. that's good. That is going to come off looking like a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. What what are you using to hold down? What what kind of glue and stuff are you using? I just use the um, water based like roll on stuff. Like Forever, I spread for it on. Yeah, yeah. What I do is if I if I'm doing hoodies or anything fleecy, I'll give it an extra five coats. So I just coat it, roll it around, coat it, right, coat it. Right. Yeah, because I was the normal coat. I was every sort of three hoodies or three rounds i was having to scrub it down i put five coats on and i'm getting 15 20 hoodies before i have to scrub it down wow yeah it works really well but you have to get the platens nice and warm for it to work that's the one thing i've found is that once they're really warm and there's enough glue on there it'll just hold it'll just hold mm. yeah I've, I've tried i've tried the other thing. i can't stand anything aerosol like that so i can't stand no. any of the spray tax whatever and it just gets everywhere and my, my first beard. press that I had, yeah, long, long old beard of mine. The first press I had, the previous guy I had obviously used spray tack, and I stripped that down to clean it, and it was just absolutely everywhere. And I was like, I can't. I'm, I'm working in a confined space. Mm. There's no way. There's no way that's going to work for me. So I've just, I've just made it work. And I know how yeah. long it takes me to do stuff now. So it takes a bit longer. It takes a bit longer. It's just one of those things. Yeah. Are you still it? on the split, the double tape you you run, don't you? Stick Pretty top much. And yes. But I found a garment the other day and it was just nightmare. Just some jumpers and they would not hold down. And I have an enormous print, which is basically 90% open ink, you know. Lovely. Open screen. So then, yeah, all the little feet on my character are all doubled up because <laughs> yeah, it's just, just moved a little bit. It's really annoying. But... They're just such a pain. In particular, I'm having real issues. What? What? Thankfully, they're, they're moving away from these now, but... A lot of the jobs have been printed on the Cotton Ridge um, peach finish mm. hoods, <laughs> and as lovely as they feel, I'd actually, I'd actually rather print on sandpaper than print. Yeah. On the- <laughs> <laughs> fucking awful! It's yeah. so bad. I had, I had fibers coming up through the screen and into the oh, ink. Yeah. They were coming up the other way. No matter how much I took all the lint off and everything, it was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> and I ended up heat pressing them all. And I thought, if I'm heat pressing, I may as well just done the target transfers and just <laughs> yeah <laughs> keep pressing them anyway yeah but, you do uh, it to kind of like rectify the the fibrillation you're like yeah like pressing it yeah there are I jobs don't... like that when you have to get them from, you have to get through so you have to come up with something don't you yeah that's what yeah. i did i just i just i just rattled them out and then just and it didn't take me long to heat press them all i just rattled them out and then heat press them all afterwards which isn't an ideal situation but it's the only garment that now that i have actual issues printing 
printing everything else now, no problem at all. But yeah. Yeah. I thought I was quite a good printer till I came on your podcast. <laughs> and I thought I the was the first right. time. Or yeah, or the today? first the first time, right? You're I thought a good I, printer. I thought Why I, do you... well, I don't know about that. I thought I was all right. I thought I was fairly knowledgeable, right? This is the the, the, the how much hubris I have. And I was like, oh my, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. I've been doing this 10 years. I'm all right. And then like, I listened I listen to your podcast and there's a few other people on. Now, as you know, I'm friends with Darcy and he's really fucking good. And I'm friends with Darren from Squeeze Orange and he's really good. And Paul from Humane and Jack. And I'm just like, I'm just a little fucking <laughs> dude, dude in the garage making a mess. <laughs> I just, I had, I don't to, know. I had to really up my game. It's good. It's made me work harder. I had to really mm. up my game. And Sarah as well. My God, the shit that she puts out uh... is unreal. Yeah. But I can't believe Sarah's got, um, you know, what's you call it, where you don't think you're good enough? Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. It's like, yeah. are you fucking kidding? I've got <laughs> the exact opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> We're like I've Donald got, Trump. <laughs> I've got poser <laughs> syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. We're like way <sighs> too confident for our for our means. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Yeah. No, but yeah, M, M definitely uh, brings me back down to earth sometimes. She's like, Mm, it looks at my prints or oh, like an a print that i did the other day she's like did you wear your glasses for this one <laughs> oh, <for fuck laughs> sake. you got to go through all of your prints and like inspect them but get my glasses on yeah you can definitely yeah. bring that i've learned i've learned to be slightly less picky because as, as long as this guy i'm printing for is happy with it and he's yeah. his bar is arguably slightly lower than mine probably would be um but but he's <laughs> done he's done enough of this to know what his customers are, are fine with Mm. And I think a lot of the times we beat ourselves up and the customers are just happy it's on there. Yeah. And they're, they're not really that fussed about it. And they just go, oh, it looks great. What are you talking about? It looks fantastic. Like, yeah, but look at this little bit here. And I'll, I'll, everyone is looking. I'm not going to be, I can't see it when I'm wearing it because it's on my back. And everyone yeah. is looking at me from 10 feet away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's there's nothing more humbling than uh, trying to sew on these fucking labels. <laughs> little tags. I can't. Do it. I can't I do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it for me. I'm so bad. This the, My floor at the moment is a graveyard for tags that haven't made it onto garments. I've, I can literally pick up three. There yeah. must be a machine that does I this. I know, like a... Like that a just like goes... Paper. And it runs it through and it goes... And then it's done. And it make, has mm. to make that exact noise. It has to go... Yeah. It doesn't like, make that noise and it's shit. <laughs> exactly, like lasers again. But come on. There's things that confuse plastic bags and all sorts. I just want like a stapler that's a little bit more sophisticated. I, I mean, a stapler would do it. I suppose you could argue that a sewing machine is basically a sophisticated <laughs> stapler. Yeah. What, what we have just described is a sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone's like, oh, you'll be able to do it. And I'm like, oh, fucking, it's not, it's not a transferable skill. And I think I'm just going to, I've just bought a frigging machine though. So I'm just, I don't know what I'm going to do. Just Still learn, to, just learn to use it. Just do it. Just get on it. Just make it happen. <laughs> I suppose I'm trying to learn in quite stressful circumstances, like at four in the morning the other day before the shop opened. I was trying to get these backpacks sewn, but they're all just yeah. But that's that is always the I think that always breeds success is leaving things to the last minute. <laughs> that's how um, I always used to say: eat pressure and shit results. Yeah. Well, sometimes if you eat too much pressure, then you just have shit results. Yeah. So you, you have to you have to balance that, that yeah. tightrope walk. I know. Um, I've had I just, many, many a late night trying to get shit ready for the for the following day. Yeah. <laughs> so do you think learn. do you think you're quite happy with this uh working arrangement now? Do you can you see it yeah, lasting a long I, time? Yeah, I can. I really like it. I really like the guy I'm working with. Um he's really cool. Um, he's just pretty chill. Well, I turned up one day and I'd um I printed so many hoodies. I've got this massive like trug on wheels. And I didn't realise having I'd rattled through and the trug was full up and the tunnel dry had backed up and it yeah. properly set fire to three hoodies. Oh like not just like a little bit singed. There was a proper fire. Um <laughs> <laughs> and, and I pulled them out and they were on fire and I just video called him and I was like, look, um, I'm gonna need some more. And he looked yeah. at him and he was like, Oh, just don't worry about it. We'll just we'll sort it out. Don't worry about it, it's all cool. He totally yeah. gets it. And oh. I need he, he, he's the he's like the, the chill influence that I need when it comes to sort of these these print jobs. So I'm, I'm I'm mega happy with the way things are going at the minute. Hmm. Um yeah, it's consistent, like there's there's never any downtime. It's literally like every week I get a phone call. Can you do this? Can you do that? 
yeah um, yeah Maybe it's that's just what you just do. building up and building up just just to pay for my little adjustments after making the studio all the time yeah <laughs> i've got another adjustment i'm working on at the minute yeah what are you working on now well i did my i like the cruiser but i don't like the off contact adjustment on it mm-hmm. with the levers so i've bought some little rose joints and a, and a threaded bar. you know the bar that you just to turn to move the screen left and right yeah well i thought if i got one of those with a coarser thread on it and put some rose joints and drilled right through the levers then I could twist that and it will push them both down at the same rate. Mm. So that's the, that, that's next week's job. I'm going to drill holes in the... In the <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> yeah. I, there's no way i trust myself to drill holes in that. But um... Well, I know how it works now because I had to basically take it completely apart um, when I had to repair that damage that I had. I had to literally take that entire section apart and all the off-contact contact and everything. So I know how mm. it works. Mm. So... I think I might. I think I might just do it. Yeah. Imagine if you make like the absolute Frankenstein cruiser that becomes so like beyond a cruiser that it's just like a pav. <laughs> I, I, I think then, that is going to happen. I think yeah. that will happen. But then you could start selling them in the UK because you're like, there aren't any British manufacturers of presses, are there? No, I don't think so. I think they're uh, all most of them made in Poland, aren't they? Yeah, and the states. Because the other thing I want is I want wider bars for the clamps on the side clamps. I want them to be. I want them to go all the full width of the, of the of the channel. So that's the other. That's the other thing. I've, I've basically got a list. I'm just gonna. Re- I'm gonna completely rebuild this, and I send them an R and email and go look. Yeah. I've done you a favour here. Yeah. <laughs> You're on the, sig- the signature path. The signature path. Yeah, I'll do. Uh, oh, what's his name? The Canadian Lee guy. I do a Lee Stewart. Yeah. That's, Oh, that's a tough act for him having to, his episode having to follow on from my one, isn't it? Yeah. I bet he really. I bet he was pooping it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what colour would you make your press? Uh, I've already th- well, I've already thought about this because when I would stripped my press down, I was like, I could paint this while it's apart, and I want to do like a Harley Quinn. You know, like the Volkswagen that was all the different colours. Mm. I want a Harley Quinn press. So, like, like yeah. every every head is a different colour. Every panel is a different colour. Ah. Like it, all the legs are all different colours, like the, the, the plate in between, the top and bottoms are different colour, all the arms, mm. all the side clamps are different colours. That's a really cool idea. Yeah. So why didn't you paint it when you had it stripped out? Like, oh, it's just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm one of those people where doing things at the right time sometimes is more effort for me than waiting and doing it at the wrong time. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. so sometimes like it, it could be the exact perfect opportunity to do something and I'll go... Nah, and then it'll be 2 a.m. and it'll be just before a job needs doing. And I'll be like, <laughs> now is the time to do that one job that I've been putting yeah. off for, <laughs> for six yeah. months. Yeah, I think I, I've got like, a little bit of that as well. I don't actually, if I've got only 10%, if I can do it in an hour, I'm like, fuck, I bother. Mm. I have to wait for a good 15, 20 orders and smash them all out at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I had, I had a job, I had 250 <laughs> hoodies to print the other, the other evening. And um, I've been meaning to check the brushes on the motor for the tunnel dryer. And I was like, do you know what? Just before printing these, this is the exact right time to check <laughs> yeah. the brushes on the tunnel dryer <laughs> um, so I can order some more. And I took the brushes out and the plastic clip that holds a spring on that pushes the brushes up against the motor just sheared off in my hand. And that was the <laughs> yeah. only thing basically making the motor spin. Yeah. Then I spent an hour and a half. I was, I've still got black in my fingernails from all the carbon. I spent an hour and a half stripping it all down and trying to cobble it so that the spring would sit underneath a tiny little, I had to find a tiny little screw and drill through it <laughs> and put the screw in and then wrap it round. And I managed to get it working. I had to get everything done. But I, was, I knew the second I started taking those brushes out, I knew it was a, it was a mistake. I was like, let's just get the job done first and then yeah. I'll do this. But it, the, the little guy inside my head was like, nah, nah, you've started now. Like you're doing, you're doing yeah. this. There is, yeah. there is no option, no option but to basically ruin your evening. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> do you reckon we've all just got like symptoms of ADHD or something and we just don't that's know? Pro- that's probably it. That's <laughs> almost certainly it. Yeah. Just, uh, we're just swanning around in our studios messing shit up. Well, not messing shit up. Eventually the product comes out okay, but... We're going a roundabout way of figuring it out. Eventually, you hope so, but yeah. yeah. So, 
how are you gonna think about i always i sorry if i'm pushing on about this but are you thinking about squeezing out your other work to leave more room for your printing or i basically, are you I basically with- have squeezed most of it out it's pretty much all gone um mm-hmm. but i had i had a, it was it actually came at a great time because january and february are generally quiet for me and this mm-hmm. year was even quieter so i took on i took on this other work and um I haven't really gone looking for anything else. Like I think I said last time, like I'm quite chatty and I'll tell people what's going on. Like and I'm a printer and stuff. And that's how I got get work. But I just haven't had to do that. She's quite relaxing. Yeah. I didn't realise how stressful it was having to do that. Mm. Um yeah, and uh, there's still a few people that I do the odd the odd job for. Um there's people like, like historically that I've printed things for, but they're not they're not huge customers. Mm. So I've just sort of I'm just running this as long. I'm basically doing this for as long as I can until either me and him fall out or um, or I run out of all that <laughs> ink that I bought off him. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, shit, I've got to strike up a deal with someone else. Yeah. Right? yeah. But Lifetime yeah, supply. Uh, uh, the, the intention is at some point to completely redo the studio, um, build a, an outbuilding uh, in the garden. I've already got it specced up six by 12 metres. Mm. Um, Are you doing one of those like uh, kit metal structures? Yeah, 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 such yeah. a good idea. Steel building, fully insulated, mm. um, roller shutters on it to get things in and out. Really, my biggest my biggest bottleneck at the moment isn't the, the size of the print shop's absolutely fine because you, mm. you only need only one person to print there anyway. Maybe someone in the dryer eventually, but the, the bottleneck for me is the the storage of the garments. Mm. That's oh, that's that is the biggest issue. Um, so much I was thinking to get I was thinking to get the shipping containers to put in the just next to the garage, just yeah. as a place to store stuff. Um, and I saw how expensive they are now. <laughs> there's 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 one down from a shipping container. So we've mm. got them down there. We've got like obviously like sh- shares of shipping containers, and then there's these ones that like flat packs. Mm. They're like mini ones. So mm. we've got like two there next to each other. And they almost look like garden sheds, but they are almost shipping containers and that's what we're using for stock for blind maggot and stuff so yeah i think that's what i need to do because it's not it's not even just that it's i'm doing all this stuff and when i'm qcing it afterwards like i'm having to to do it in the lounge um on the dining room table like (laughs) it's just wherever there's a space it's like right that's the space i'm folding these t-shirts on today i need us i need a space to Mm. count garments in qc them box them back up and then go out i think once that once that bit's sorted i'm sort of at a level where things are pretty good yeah, um, yeah and then i just the, the pain of embroidery <laughs> yeah no yeah embroidery is really tricky because for years i've been saying oh yeah you just press the button there's no craft at all but i think most of the craft in embroidery is actually in the digitizing mm. and the artwork prep um, yeah another boring thing to say about that that container issue is there's absolutely tons and tons of auction sites where businesses go under and they're mm. always selling welfare units because that's what I have been looking at welfare units because that would actually yeah. be perfect because it's like Insta-ish. set up to be worked in. Yeah. Mm. Um I've got a small problem that I, what I was using was my van. Mm. Um, but I had a slight snafu with the van. <laughs> snafu. I've never heard of the like <laughs> most of your words. Yeah. So I was driving along and I had some friends in the car and we were going out for dinner. I'm just driving along, and then just the front wheel just came off. Yeah. Just just came off, just came clean <laughs> off. Um, so yeah, my my shed that I had is now currently sitting waiting to be repaired. <laughs> it, it was yeah. a perf- it was a perfect shed because it had a big back door and it had a big side door, and I could put all of the clothes in it that I was printing, and then I could lift the tail get up, and I could do some packing under there if it was a nice day or whatever. Um, so yeah, my 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 little mobile so, shed is no longer available how, do, how does the wheel come off without all those nuts and bolts and the hub cap and well what happened was all of the wheel <laughs> bolts came off at the same time yeah so well, I, think just, I think someone's trying to kill me <laughs> yeah, i think um, so that's quite hard work isn't it it's yeah like... yeah it's like some it's either that or someone's tried to nick my wheels it's the only thing i can think of mm. um but yeah it was, it was pretty frightening it's just funny driving along and then the vehicle tilting and then seeing your wheel piss off up the yeah, road. Yeah, <laughs> that's not funny. <laughs> uh, so uh, I haven't got my I haven't got my storage room at the minute, which is a bit of a pain. But we'll get mm, there. 
Um, my van broke down the other day, but I thought it was so old they wouldn't have all that like electronics stuff. No, and it just, do. it just, everything was pittering out, and I was having more and more of these warning lights, like airbag, something else. So like all the fucking warning lights came on all at the same time, and then it actually started talking to me. It was to go, and then the wheel started locking up, and it goes press this button twice to call the emergency services and they're just pitted out was it did you have <laughs> night rider you're, 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 it was like a, a female night rider though <laughs> and then it just like died in the middle <laughs> of the road and yeah the aa weren't any fucking use they like took 12 hours to get to me this episode is sponsored by the aa yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> who, are, who are your sponsors at the moment all the sponsors yeah you might well, this. give them a plug well, go on magna colors Hi, We've got Screen Print World. Hi, Dave. We've got <laughs> Adobe Creative. Yeah, hi, Dave. We've got Adobe Creative Suite. I definitely pay for that. I've done yeah. for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Adobe. Um, oh God, don't put me under pressure. Uh, M and R are doing something like different with us, but they're not doing the podcast anymore. Oh. Oh God! Who else? When, they, when, they, when they've got a new M and R engineer on, and they're not they're not sponsoring it anymore, you need to get them in just <laughs> yeah. for this one. I know. Well, yeah, they could stick around. <laughs> oh God! Do I not know the sponsors off the top of my head like that? It's like when you say like, "What's your mobile number?" and you're like, "Uh, <laughs> I have no idea." Uh, maybe that's it. Shit, Pav. Sorry. I'll uh, I'll I'll add. You better not cut this bits. bit out. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting embarrassing. I'm squirming. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, target transfers. Target, target transfers. transfers. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, target transfers. Uh, maybe that's it. That's probably it, right? Yeah. How many sponsors least... do you need? I don't know. Well, just keep it coming. I might have the metal store, which is quite an interesting one. Uh, what do they do? De- we just yeah, it's completely random. But we just decked out our shop, hmm. and we used all their like scaffolding and stuff. And we've been using like their scaffolding for the market stores in the front room. And then they wanted us to like show they were like a customer use case of the metal because mm. normally they don't really get the photos and stuff. So now we've done some videos and they were like, oh, just here's the money for the, your kit, your shop kit out. And we're like, OK, <laughs> like in in um, return for the videos that we were making them. That's a nice one. So when you when you said the metal store. I didn't realise it was actual metal. I thought you were talking actual about, metal. like, music. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, like, the metal store. No, no, no. no <laughs> that they, would they be can't... a great name for a um for a music shop, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's a really cool name. No, they, they'd never sponsor me for stuff like that because I, I do things like the... I was just the biggest geek. I'd say all the wrong things. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, like, the worst person when it comes to talking to music, too. Talking about music, too. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you any music questions. I, I will fuck them up. I'll show myself up as a complete loser. But yeah, we're, we're talking today actually about what our specialities would be on quizzes. Oh, what would yours be? Uh, I know a lot of like vocabulary and random facts about things. Like, if you, you didn't, said, and like, yet you didn't know snafu. I didn't know snafu. No, but now you that's do. What, that's why we need like you on the team as well. Oh, right, okay, right, okay. Fill in the the random okay. words. Snafu is not a real word, though, is it? Hopefully, it's, I, I'm, it must be. I used it. It is now. <laughs> yeah, it, it is now. It is now in the screen printing vernacular. <laughs> <laughs> but what would your what would your speciality be in a quiz? Um, Subject. I don't think I, I honestly don't think I know anything well enough to be quizzed on it. Um. Um. Friends birthdays. I'm really good at my friends' birthdays. Like That's someone asked me like when someone's birthday was, I think I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at that. Um, but <laughs> aside from that, I don't think I know anything. I just I don't have one of those brains that knows stuff. I'm quite good with spreadsheets. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking <laughs> love a spreadsheet. I, yeah. I, there's something about a spread, there's a beauty in a spreadsheet. Yeah. And you get everything working and you don't get a and then a, a hash slash na you don't get a divide by zero error like when it's all working it's just it's a beautiful thing so maybe maybe spreadsheets spreadsheets be- talk about friends i'd probably have friends as the series mm. i know oh, yeah. I, I watch that a lot of times like i could probably do like if you said a bit of the script i'd probably 
know a bit the next lines. Or I feel like I should or. ask you a question about him now. Uh, oh, a friend's question. Yeah, try, try, and, try and give me a friend's question. I haven't now. got one. I haven't got one lined up. Hmm. Um, who is? Um, I don't really know enough about it either. Who? What's Ch- Chandler's surname? Uh, <laughs> Bing. Yes, well done. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I, I, do you know what? It came to me because I just looked down and I've just upgraded my windows and it says Bing at the bottom. Really? Yeah. That yeah. is so weird. No, it's not listening to me. It's just the, yeah. the search bar is Bing. Yeah. And I, I looked down. I was like, what is it? I know it's a B. I looked down. And I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> ask me another question about anything that's on my computer screen and I'll answer uh... it fine. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the paperclip. Do you know the paper clip that used yeah, to give you tips? I watched, I watched a um, little um, like ten minute documentary about the paper clip and the guy who designed the paper clip. Yeah, yeah, Clippy was his name. Clippy. Yeah, <laughs> sounds right. Yeah, it was a yeah. I think it was a Business Insider video on on YouTube. I'm sure yeah. his name's Clippy. It's very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. I I, I miss him as well. He used to be, yeah. he, I found him genuinely helpful. Yeah, I've, I I feel like we should be able to download him for modern times. I just... want him in my brain. Yeah. is this what you meant to say like, yeah. <laughs> there's a matter of times i say the wrong thing yeah how many women i've asked uh, and they've not been pregnant they've just been fat so mm. many times so many so, times th- th- that is when i wish there was a control z button for life <laughs> yeah five minutes back you think you're being like oh, when you when you, I've done it because I've got up on a train and let someone sit down and they're not pregnant. That's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, they just go like stretch. Yeah. To be like oh, I just wanted to stretch my legs anyway. It's not because you're pregnant. So yeah, just fat. style it out. Just really style it out. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever like touched their stomach as well and be like, when's it due? Have you no, ever, how far have you gone? I, I wouldn't no. go that. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I'd, I'd ask them out on a date first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take them for dinner. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I was going to become the. the you can't just you can't just go child. touching random people on the train, Jesse. That's no, not that's not acceptable behaviour. Seriously, my sisters, when they've been pregnant, they've had random strangers touch their stomachs. Just like really. Yes, it happens to pregnant women, lots. Okay, so you, you should be allowed to legally punch them in the face if someone mm. does that. Mm. Also, if someone walks in front of you really slowly, you should be allowed to punch them. Yeah. Those are the two th- times yeah. you can punch people. I, I think pocket tasers. Oh. Yeah. No, it's I'd end up... fucked up I, that I've made it into a pocket. <laughs> I couldn't have a pocket taser. I'd end up tasing my balls by accident like, all day. <laughs> I'm always trying to get something out of my pocket. I'd end up... <laughs> and I'd be walking down the street and all of a sudden yelping pain as the, as, as the little ones down there have been sent like Green Mile. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Green Mile. It's such a horrible film. Oh, so upsetting, that film. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> no, I like that. Go get that out of my head. Sorry. Let's talk about screen printing. We could Let's try it. Screen- <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's your unpopular opinion in the screen print industry that you hear like other people say, but well, you really agree with? I thought this was unpopular. Um, turns out I'm not alone with this. I think you might be one of these people as well. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I fucking hate those upright squeegees. The the ones with the arms. Yeah, the ones that look yeah. like you're holding two dicks. Yes. The, 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 I, I don't know why. Like when I, I I bought a load of stuff off of Jack and Jack had them and he said, Oh, they're really good. I was like, okay, I always wanted to try them. And I think they're probably fine for a thinner ink, maybe for water based or discharge, whatever. For plastisol, they're next to useless. Anything with a bit of body to it. They buckle when you're using them. I've had to adjust mine. I had to like cut a strip of metal and drill it through from the inside yeah. and then rivet it on to make it stiff enough to actually use. Yeah. And what I find as well is because I'm holding them upright, I end up tucking my elbows in like I'm like yeah. I'm having dinner at a fancy restaurant. And, <laughs> yeah. it's, and it's not comfortable. It's not a comfortable position. I want to have my arms out a bit like I'm riding a bicycle. Hmm. And um, that's what they call them in ancient Greece. Yes. And, and uh, <laughs> so my unpopular opinion is that whoever like made them like just didn't have a human sized body. Yeah. They were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or they didn't have man tits like I've got. They weren't, I just don't get it. I don't understand the hype behind them. And the, Me neither. the, and the squeegee yeah. falls out all the time. I, it's such a bodge job. And okay. I'm all up for people being inventors and doing it, but it's like you do it. It's just lies. You can't use that squeegee for every job. No. 
because it's just pants. It, yeah, it does that buckling thing, and then it's got these two little prongs for when it fall for when it falls over in the ink to catch itself. Yeah, and so it it's puts not ink so everywhere. Why is it falling over in the first place? Because it's, it's so bollocks. light. It's bollocks. The whole thing shit. I and, think it's um, bollocks. Well. well, if I was going to redesign it, I'd redesign it with the ha- with the handles canted slightly, so you're holding it like you're driving a car, mm. like at an angle. That mm. would sort of work, but then you're not getting the downward pressure. Yeah. So yeah, that's my they're unpopular like, opinion. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're shit. I'm all aboard with that. And yeah, just shitty products that have like infiltrated. You, you didn't tell in. Lee Stewart that when he was on there, did you? You didn't tell him his squeegees are I've shit. To- I have told him his squeegees are shit. <laughs> have you? I've made, I've made a YouTube video about it. I've made oh, a YouTube hilarious. video about it. Yeah. Oh, I, I've said that loads of times. And if he asked me directly, I'm like, yes, your signature squeegee is bollocks. Because it's like he invented it. Yeah, I know. Like, he just, can't get upset. He's just got his version of it. He just made it black and green. Black and yeah. green. No, they're not they're not ideal. That's probably my unpopular opinion. Um but then that sounds you, like a popular opinion. I don't think we're alone in that. No. So there's any more unpopular ones because you can't just berate all I, I want there to be innovation in screen printing products. Yeah. But that meta ergonomic one is bang on. So mm. <laughs> just that is oh no, you good. see, I'm not a, I'm not such no? a fan of those. Well, you wouldn't. Well, remember. I've got hands like a Lego man. So I, <laughs> Let's I, li- see. I, li- I like the square ones that look like they're supposed to go in. The ones that you normally use when you're clamping into a hand bench. You know the ones I mean with the oh, yeah, yeah. square profile. I like those. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't mind the Ergo ones. But I prefer the square ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. I think it's because I can, like, oh, I've got Lego hands. Yeah. I wish I had a Lego head so I could put, like, a new haircut on every day. Yeah. <laughs> or just any hair <laughs> yeah do you get i get advertised to for um those hair pieces now don't I know why honestly can't tell you what i get advertised because <laughs> this podcast will get taken down <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'm just i always say this but social media is so confused as to what i am like they didn't they don't they don't know how to pigeonhole me they, they know i don't look at the 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 advertising for the women who are like mm. super feminine and then they're like throwing me off on the boldness thing and i do watch the headpieces get installed so they're <laughs> oh, like it's your own fault, is this then? a bold man <laughs> it's your own fault you're watching yeah, them you've yeah. got a fine head of hair thank you very much i've got yes. a, i look like a gorilla look like an aging <laughs> an aging gorilla <laughs> yeah i've got I a think, gorilla yeah. body and i've got lego, lego hands, hands. <laughs> i'm just an absolute mess at least oh. you can grow a nice full beard, though. I can't That's though. Like... Look, it doesn't grow on the oh. sides. This, but for some reason, but I've got, they... I've it's got selected. Anyway. Se- no, I don't. It's just how it. Just how my face. This is a great content. It's just how my <laughs> facial hair grows. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do have this weird white bit that is that mm. is naturally white. That's, That's, That's good. That's the only distinguishing thing about me. Yeah, I think you're no. very distinguished. Thank you. That's okay. <laughs> uh. Keep, keep the compliments coming. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, okay. And then if another screen printing kind of like question would be say if someone's asking you, because people ask you stuff now, like mm. screen printed related stuff, because you're doing the live videos on is it always on Fridays? It's normally your... a Friday, yeah. I've not yeah. done one for a little while because I've not had a job that I've been able to do it on, unfortunately. But yeah, generally speaking, I'll do a little a live on a on a Friday if I can. Yeah. yeah. And in that you're gonna get loaded up with kind of you know people asking advice or what you're using in that video and stuff so mm. do people ask you how to get like smooth whites and what would what are the things that you tell them to like no to no, no one has asked me that yet no one's asked you. no <laughs> um i think if they want to if they want to know something like that they should ask someone that knows how to do it um <laughs> <laughs> no i i have found the secret to smooth whites and it's really really simple um just stir the fuck out of the ink yeah <laughs> that's literally it you just gotta stir the ink like make sure that, particularly with white make sure the mesh isn't too high of a count like there's no there's no reason to be f- trying to ram it through a 77 like you're gonna it's, you're gonna cause you dramas mm. um yeah and the big i think the, the biggest thing after the ink is getting the garment right like yeah. it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what what you do with certain garments they're gonna look rough yeah like, they are gonna look rough short of having one of those um what they called 
Stampy Wampy. Stampinators. Stampinators. Stampy Wampy. What the fuck is that? Yeah, let's <laughs> not have like you in kid... the naming department. Sounds, sounds, like a, sounds like a kid's show. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The, the garment's important. I mean, I've never had a, I've never had any problems with a smooth print on an Azcolor or a Stanley Stella. No. Um, yeah, and I think that's probably the two things, stirring the ink and and the right garment. I don't think there's yeah. much else to it, really. And yeah. making making as few passes as possible. The yeah. more time that screen's in contact with the garment, the more chance you have of stirring some fibers up. So, yeah. Um, also, just overheating it because if you're oh, yeah, massively, you're yeah, it's like aggravating the fibers, and then yeah, you can have the the, the the should. I really want to make a really good troubleshooting guide for this mm. type of thing because you can have three prints, and then you just I don't know, you just had a. A moment on the press where you overheated one of the one of the shirts and that one looks a bit funny mm. and i want to have a thing where if your print looks glossy <laughs> then this is probably what's happened mm. and like troubleshoot it maybe in a infographic or something like that i think that'd be really handy for people I mean, what what flash do you, do you have you've got the bbc flash haven't you yeah you've got the one it's with really the dial good. on it so you can adjust it up and down uh and well, just 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 the height well mine's no. got like mine's got like a, an old like Look like something from a Soviet area bomb. Like it's got a dark goes click, 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 click all around. <laughs> right? And um, and it's and I, and I didn't know what I bought it secondhand, so I didn't know actually what it did. So I, I emailed them and I said, "Is this just a percentage of power?" And they said, "Yeah, it's exactly what it is." I was like, "Cool." So I've basically run the whole thing at forty percent, really low, forty yeah. percent. So the heat's it's really close to the garment, but it's not like scalding hot. Mm. I've had no problems. Yeah. I run everything under that, particularly yeah. actually since I've put that. Um, put that thermometer on because i know rough i've actually moved the um moved the the thermal probe closer and lower now so it's actually nearer the garment mm. so i know roughly what temp i'm hitting on the garment every time that's really um, good and, yeah and it seems it seems to make a lot of difference but it, it, there's just so many variables so like what kind of temperature are you trying to get the ink to that when it's under the flash well it's actually not the temperature i'm getting the ink to it's the temperature i'm getting the probe to because the probe yeah. is still not quite <laughs> uh trying to get it to the probe normally gets to around 67 and a half degrees roughly mm. um but that also fluctuates what you, you have to remember is the, the plant's getting hot as well so that's going to radiate some heat back up so as the job what i have done in the past is turn the um turn the flash up for the first like 15 minutes while i'm getting everything warm and then right. once all the platins are the same temperature then i'll turn it back down and then the radiant heat of it and, and constantly printing mm. is um is doing doing a lot of the work. Yeah, um, that's clever. Yeah, and I, and I will always if I'm like in between jobs, but I'm going to carry on printing. I won't just turn the flash off. I'll leave it on, and I'll set a timer because I know it's roughly like between thirty and forty seconds for me for it going under. I've got, I've got a timer that runs forty five seconds, and that every time that goes off, I spin the plan while I'm setting up for the for the next part of the job. So I'm still okay. I'm still keeping them in rotation, still keeping them warm while I'm inking up the next screen. Or yeah, so you're just keeping the platens hot for that amount of time, just yeah. in case someone didn't figure that out. Yeah, yeah. you're not like yeah, just keeping them warm. You're not don't, flashing don't your that. prints for thirty seconds. No, because what's be so fire. easy to so easy to do is like r run a job and then get the halfway through a job, get distracted, and then you're like, oh right, well I don't want to set fire to the platens, which we've all done. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll turn them like. Off, off kilter so that so the flash isn't hitting above it and then they all cool down and then you're running it around again you're like why is this not why is this not looking the same because you've changed the variable like the, mm. the, the platen's no longer the temperature that, that it should be for, for running so i try and keep everything as consistent as possible all the way yeah. through that almost well, sounded like i knew what i was talking about then definitely but Less also, of that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we have to go back to like lasering your i mean uh yeah no but Genuinely, why don't because the people who are making the automatic presses, why can't they have self-heating patterns? Yeah, why can't, why can't I suppose that would make sense be useful because it's really useful for water-based printing. Because if the pattern's hot, then you're not like evaporating all the ink mm. on the surface and I've stuff. Not, I've not, I've not attempted water-based printing yet. Really. Is mm. this something you want to get into or you just can't see the value in it yet? Weirdly, or... I've got shitloads of water-based ink. Um, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it's something I will do. Probably try discharge as well. 
Mm. Um, yeah, I suppose there must be a reason why the platens aren't heated. I mean, if you've got the honeycomb platens and they don't hold a great deal of heat anyway, do they? Um, there, and there is there is a danger of buckling. Even the, even the metal platens, you can buckle them. Mm. Um, not not to such a large extent as you can the wooden ones, but yeah, I don't know. There must be so a then- reason. There must be some technology that you can transfer from a heat press because that's got all like the coils yeah. in the press and that doesn't buckle or anything because that has to stay nice. So have like a, just... an upside down heat press. Mm. Oh, I like this. Oh, this is next weekend's project. I've got an old <laughs> heat press I can take apart. Upside down <laughs> heat press and then load it on. The, the, the difficulty with, I'm just working through my head, the difficulty with it, I think, with a manual press is where you make the connection for the electrics for it. Hmm. But do you, know, like you the, started something in my head now. <laughs> yeah, but the Stampinator, I was talking to Ryan Morgan, the and he was like, the, someone came to him at a trade show about the Stampinator, and he was like disregarding it. Hmm. And then, because it was for a different use, and then hmm. he just kind of guided it into the use of, no, 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 we're not doing it to apply transfers or anything like that. We're going to smooth out prints. Mm. And he kind of just changed the market for it slightly. Mm. So yeah, I think I think yeah, there could be something. There's probably more. There. There's probably an efficiency thing with having the stampinator over heated platens as well. I should imagine. Aside from in like energy wise, mm. um, anytime you heat something, you use a lot of energy, don't you? So if yeah. you're heating, if you're heating one thing, which is a stampinator, or if you've got a eighteen station press, I know yeah. I know which one I'd rather be paying to heat. Yeah. But now people are actually apparently one man shops are taking out their dryers and putting in stampinators because they're actually curing the ink with the stampinator. So what? This is mind blowing. <laughs> Hold on. These these are the stampinators. Yeah. Just to, just for curing. Yeah, because it's parcel ink. So yeah, but just... like, how quickly is it curing it then? I know that's what I was asking. Because but... presum- presumably, there's a. I know it has to hit a certain degree, but. My understanding was it has to build up to that over a certain amount of time and then reach that and then it's cured. The whole ink um, depth has to hit that temperature and then it's done. Right. Okay, Whereas so with water-based ink, it has to stay at that temperature for a long time just so that you can evaporate all the ink out and then it can it can actually go through the chemical process of fusing to the fibers. But plus, so it's just like cook it and it's done. Mm. It's just permeate through all the ink layers. But if it's a thin ink layer, if it's black ink on white shirts... Stampinator will cure it. I suppose it's fine if you know you're going to stay plastisol forever. Yes, <laughs> it's not great if you like decide one day, oh, let's let's add water base in. No, and then you're like, no, now we got to spend, now we got to chuck sixty grand at a new dryer. Yay! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. It's interesting though. Is I I have this conversation a lot with people where they're like, should I go water base or should I go plastisol? And it always unfortunately comes towards like. How much money have you got? Mm. Because plaster will be cheaper for you straight after the fact Mm. that you get the dryer and the flash. Then Mm. you're going to have a really easy time. Or being a new screen printer who does water-based, you might struggle because you have to be more technically advanced with ink not drying in and that type of problem, which newbies are dealing with. Yeah. but then I just, overheads less. I just like that I can sort of walk away from something. I yeah. think that's the, the benefit from it. And also, I don't feel like I'm wasting anything. At the end of the job, it all gets yeah. scraped up. It all goes back in the bucket. Yeah. Um, and then there's a little bit of chemical for cleaning the screen down. I literally, once the job's done, unless I have to, I don't take the screen off the press. It stays on there. I clean it yeah. all down and it just stays clean on the press. And then that's it. Yeah. I, I saw one little innovation you, you talked about actually where you moved from really simple thing like moving from the card to the plastic scrapers, ink scrapers. I've always done that. I've done that since yeah. I very, very first oh, did began. You? Yeah, oh, okay. it's um, it's just something I realized when I was doing the other day that other people may not know about. Mm. Um, for those who haven't seen my reel, um, I just I buy the little plastic I say I buy them I bought them once 10 years yeah. ago and I'm still using them I bought a pack of 100 white plastic ID cards blanks and they're really flexible and they're chemical resistant so you can scrape plaster so off you can card them off they're great for carding off the edge if you're doing emulsion and stuff as well and then mm. you can clean them I yeah. actually all I have is I have a little jar or a, a pot a jam jar of, of ink cleaner that's just shorter just shorter than the um than the cards and they just sit in there and they just, they just take it out wipe it off and it's clean yeah. and I don't, I don't have to rip up any bits of card and 
Yeah. yeah. I, I, did, I, did, I, I just thought everyone did that. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I was sitting I, there thinking, oh, maybe no one else does this. Yeah. I, I just had these weird business card things that came with some tags years mm. ago. I just got a massive stack of them. So I mm. just never got through them, really. But that's why I use. Um, also, like, there's so many over-engineered things. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, my press for starters. I've... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my Franken press. Yeah, the Franken press. So it's got lasers, thermometers. It's going to have. <laughs> yeah, the off plans. contact adjustment's going to be going to be an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, um, I just I can't not fiddle with stuff. If I think there's an optimization to be made somewhere, I will. Uh, if there's a job that takes three hours and I could start it and finish it within three hours, right? I would rather spend the first two and a half hours finding a way to do it in half an hour. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that, that, that's good. That's how, and then I know the next time, if that comes in, I can do that in half an hour. Yeah, that's like awesome. I've, that's like just, lean, isn't it? I've just recent, I think it is. It sort of is, isn't it? I've just recently redone all of my pricing matrix and everything so that I can literally punch everything in and I just put Garmin, I just put the code and it pulls the code from another spreadsheet and then the, price i pay for it and yada 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 so then if there's any pricing jobs i do for someone else if i, if I do get the odd sort of job in that isn't on the contract side of things it literally goes dunk and it even spits out the um the quote at the end of it as well puts it into a mail mode and just and it's done it takes yeah. me it took me three days to do the back on spreadsheets did the spreadsheet yeah. yeah um yeah now it's literally takes me 50 seconds a minute to to run a quote off yeah that's insane yeah that's really good that's yeah. kind of stuff I it's like, basically I like, like um like printavo but without all the extra bells and whistles <laughs> yeah and the 300 quid a month or whatever it is am i <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot 300 pounds a month that's probably for 10 quotes they limit it they cap it you got to ask i don't know if it's 300 you got to ask um oh my goodness why is it so uh, much money Sangre. they've got it where there's a there's a intro pack <laughs> And they cap the amount of invoices you're allowed to create. And then the next threshold is like a lot. And that's kind of like the pro well, version or something. All your listeners, I'm happy to sell you my spreadsheet for £250. Yes. For a one off fee. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my bank account. <laughs> it's, it's great as well. It works yeah. really well. Well, why not? That, that, imagine yeah. the value that could add. If someone does. I don't know, five or six quotes a week or something, and it saves them that many hours. And oh, you can think- do you can do multiple quotes at a time. You can put mm. the you can put the um the customer in the in the different column, and you can have multiple you can do multiple quotes of different customers at the same time, and it will spit them out into separate. So I'm literally I have one quoting sheet. I just go dunk. If I have five jobs come in, I can put all five of them in, and it will punch it out the other end. That's bloody brilliant. Yeah, you the more should. I think about it, I should probably sell it. Definitely, a hundred percent. There's there's templates on my website that go like three quid, three quid, two pound fifty, like constantly. Mm. You need to just these weird little templates and assets mm. that are just just pinging in the background. It's like a coffee, and you're like, oh, brilliant. Mm. I mean, that took me like three hours to make, and then it's just paying me forever. Just yeah, little bits. I'm gonna have to do that. Yeah, I'll think about that. Corey from Broadway you- sells this as well. You can have me on. You can have me on in another year's time. I'll let you know how my thriving uh, spreadsheet business is going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even if it's just now and then, who cares? Like, yeah. <laughs> I just like I just like finding little ways to make my life easier. Yeah. Now, one Perhaps. thing I've really got into the habit of, and this is really sad, is I have a where, where I have my tick list of all the garments in, garments out. The second I start a job, even if it's like from the point where I load the space, I start my job effectively when I load the screen into the into the press. Um, I start a stopwatch and I time the entire job from the moment, like even if I stop for breaks, like that's all included in it. So then I've now got like a, a, a whole load of data mm. from, uh, I know roughly how long it takes me to do a single colour job on this specific hoodie because one hoodie might be a bit more difficult to print. Or like if I've got kids plans and I've got to change the plans out, that all goes down as part of the information. I've started sort of documenting everything. Mm. And it makes you really good at eyeballing how long things are going to take. Yeah. 
because you sort of have a rough idea in your head anyway, but I've got this basically list and it's like a cheat sheet of, right, this is how long this one's going to be. So this is how much this job's got to be charged at. Yeah. Um, so I'm, basically, I'm effectively charging by time, but the value of the time rather than the actual like hourly rate of printing sort of thing. That's really clever because a lot of people don't think that far, do they? They Even us, when we were quoting up jobs, we used to think screen setup, price mm. per print, mm. garment, add-on. They mm. were the only three variables, but yeah, some of them do take longer. We weren't even print uh, charging for underbases and stuff. But what you're mad? Mm. Mm. They yeah, charge for everything. <laughs> yeah. I have, I've got a, my, my the way my um spreadsheet works is there's like a I can obviously adjust it as my price per color, like starting and then the additional per screen or whatever, and then there's a a bracket of how many garments someone's ordered and depending on how many they've ordered adjusts how much markup I have put on the garment as well. Oh, really? Yeah. So if someone's ordering 50 t-shirts, they get a lower markup from me on the t-shirts than they do if they order 10. Mm. The, 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 the value in me for printing 10 is should really be the same as for printing 20, but it's yes. not because it, it's taking me, the, the time to print is more or less the same but it's stopping me print something else. Yes. So I'd rather make a bit more money on the much lower runs and then and then, and then work it up. If I have to lose a bit on the top ones, it's not so much of an issue. But yeah, it's, it's like yeah. a, it works it all out for me. Have you just self-taught all these spreadsheets and things or have you? Yeah. I'll tell you yeah. what happened. <laughs> this is a really bizarre <laughs> story. Um, when COVID hit, uh, I ended up being part of this community group and we ended up basically setting up volunteers to go and do people shopping for and pick up their mm. like people at run will pick up their prescriptions this and that and we were getting hundreds and hundreds of calls a week mm. from people and we needed a way of organizing it all and I said well let's just like put people in groups or whatever and then we'll when the calls come in they can go to a central place and that person can allocate them whatever and I said that'd be really good to do with a spreadsheet and I realized I didn't know how to really do a spreadsheet so I just taught myself yeah, and I built this spreadsheet that combined thirty other spreadsheets from all the from all the other areas, Jesus and Christ. it combined all the data, and then it spat out um, uh, graphs for us based on when we expected calls to come in. I basically yes. did a full data analysis. Oh my god! P- purely by accident. Um, yeah, and I think that sort of sparked something in me that I like working out how things are gonna, how things. If I can see a pattern in something and see how it's gonna work out, then I like mm. to. Or if mm. I can find a way of of knowing like the rough outcome given a set of variables, and I like to, and that sort of it sparked that, and that, I've never really stopped doing it since then. Just self talk. Really cool. Yeah, but you can load those spreadsheets now into Chat GPT and stuff, and you can ask it to analyze the spreadsheet for patterns and put it and make graphs from the spreadsheets. Yeah, I don't understand the Chat GPT thing. It's to, I don't. I generally don't trust anyone or anything cleverer than me. Which but is a, so which is admittedly a very it. very wide pool of things, uh, including my dog. But <laughs> if if it's smarter than me and also runs on electric, then I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I trust it your even computer, less. Your computer and your spreadsheets run on electric. And yeah, I know, I know. Logical. But the spreadsheet isn't smarter than me. The spreadsheet is just a basic a little a little piece of me. It's the part of my brain that I've <laughs> I've I've ensconced into it to do that that bit of the job for me. I'm yeah, basically definitely. downloading my brain, <laughs> little job yeah. by little job, in, into Google Sheets. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really interesting that you just self-taught it. I, I tried to self-teach what well, I have. I've, so, I've done a lot, quite a lot of coding and stuff. But then there are apps that made my knowledge obsolete. So, mm. <laughs> so I couldn't get ahead of the technology where there's just an app for that now. And I'm like, oh, that's six months of... <laughs> Yeah, I think it's learning it's stre- something. It stretches your brain though, doesn't it? It yeah. makes your brain go all wrinkly rather than all smooth. That's yeah. what I that's what I tell myself anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'd much yeah. rather a, a wrinkly brain than a smooth one. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it means I've got to sit up till 3 a.m. asking myself why well, I've got an error in this spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> Googling. <laughs> or forever chasing the wrinkly brain. Yeah. <laughs> Tired of my sex tape. There we go. I did a yeah. I did a Brooklyn nine nine um. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was like, this is gonna go sat. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, oh, when in doubt, bring up yeah. the bullsack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Do you, I have this other idea to pass by you. Instead of the trade shows and going to the trade shows, mm. do you think 
we should collectively organize yes. a party. Yeah. Yes. I have yeah. I did try and do it before when I tried to do the screen printing Olympics. Then life got on top of me. I don't know if you remember I started to do that. Yeah. Um life got on top of me and it had to take a bit of a bit of a sideline. And then when obviously printware came along, uh, we managed to organize a few people to go for dinner and that. And it was great. And I think really for most people, the, the reason they go to these sorts of things is to see other people. Because mm. we're quite an insular sort of industry. Like we we got our own little workshops, our own little studios, and you don't really go like visiting other people's studios like it would be cool to go and do but mm. if we had just said once or twice a year whatever like in the downtime in like january february when it's quiet for most people mm. just meet somewhere in the middle of the country have a knees up like, yeah. talk shit yeah okay. i think we're gonna do it aren't we yeah okay um one of the other print studios is a lot bigger than us is, has invited to be a premises so yeah um mm. maybe we need to make a little group and discuss things because your your print olympics thing was so hilarious yeah it was, a, it, it was a great it was like, idea there were all there was loads of like um names of countries that's it. yeah and there was like a mexico which was one of my yeah. favorite ones <laughs> yeah. everyone's been, oh i'm sure i came up with a really good one i was super a, proud of myself on, hold on i've got a list of them here hold on yeah let's let's get it out and i was the, really proud of myself and, the and someone made it made a better one above me and i was like oh, um, you made some more, awesome ones. A few more notes. Oh god, this. So, uh, do you just have untold notes on your? Yes. Oh my god, it is actually ridiculous. Um, some of them don't even make any sense. Christmas. It's literally just as one word, Christmas, and yeah. nothing else. <laughs> as if you're going to forget about <laughs> Christmas. Um, I must plan for Christmas. <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, Mexico. There was a uh, Sarah Columbia. <laughs> Philippine holes. Yeah, that's a really good one. Philippine holes. <laughs> this was my favourite one. Japan tone. <laughs> yeah, that's good. There's we so many. Just... Bangladesh. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Degreaser. <laughs> yeah, I want to be Bangladesh. Uh, Sweden. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Madagascar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Nepal. We're... Nepal. That was that was a very clever one. <laughs> Nepal. Nepal. Yeah. Oh, the closer to the actual country name that you can get it. Yeah, ink Everyone's rock. Sub- ink. <laughs> Say that one. Ink rock. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them make sense more when they're written down, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Dur- Durometer Republic was a, a really tenuous yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so if anyone wants to come along to that, um, yeah, pick pick a country. The country has to be a, <laughs> a pun. Yeah. Pr- Screen print related pun. I forgot about that. I even set up an Instagram for it and everything, and then just everything. The, the fan got hit by the proverbial poo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll, we'll regurgitate happened. it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh God, I'm just looking. At, do you know you're saying like how many notes have you got? I've got one thousand seven hundred and thirty-two unread emails. That's quite a lot. I wonder how many I've got. <laughs> Let's do an unread email count. Um. Oh. Top trumps. Oh, no, I accidentally archived everything the other day. Uh, so no. I haven't got anything that says how many I've got. No, um, mine were it's definitely more than five, anxiety. though. Oh, I have an actual business email. Do you remember last time we were speaking, I said I was going to get a um, website? Yes. I haven't done a website, but I have an actual business email now. <laughs> so people can actually email me, and I get approximately one email a week on it. <laughs> it's, all, it's, it's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem is I haven't given it to anyone. But like, the only people that have it are all... Uh, all that the, my suppliers and stuff and and, mm. and friends and that that need things printing yeah it's quite really, exciting it makes you feel really special yeah i really want your website when you load it up to be like off screen there's half of a dog half of a horse and then <laughs> as the loading thing comes they just merge together <laughs> and there's like that little timer and then you know you're at the right website yeah I, I, will get, I, I will get a website because I, I i really enjoyed doing those live live printing yeah. on instagram and i think it'd be really cool to have like a website where i promote all that sort of stuff yeah um yeah people just like watching people do manual shit don't they yeah they do um well, it's actually interesting rather than watching a as my, as my friend around. my friend who i did at the with the printing for one of those jobs he said his exact words to me it's the same guy who came up with the dog horse he said oh i loved watching you do that print on your on your tea tray roundabout <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what he called it. So now it's it's the, it's not the M and R cruiser. It's the M and R tea tray roundabout. <laughs> yeah, you can add that in vinyl, like cut uh, vinyl on my other legs. Uh, I want my my press arms are named. Yeah, they're named after the after the Mamba Number no. Five song. So there's Angela, Pamela, Cassandra, and Rita. They've all got <laughs> names. <laughs> Just, are they labelled up? Or are you yeah, yeah, they've got, they've got they've got little labels on the side. Just you can't see them because they're underneath where the where the platen slides on. They're stuck on the side. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's weird, but I just like I know that Angela is A, so that's like my master platen. So that's, <laughs> but everything goes around from there. Yeah, and do you just <laughs> but do you just shout to yourself every so often like Mother Number Five because yeah. you've got the. Well, so frequently, like it's ridiculous. <laughs> You're like, That's... It's normally when I'm changing the platen, so I forget about it, and then the platens get changed. I'm like, oh, Angela, oh, Pamela, oh, Cassandra, and Rhea. And obviously, as I continue, now they're getting sweeter. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, if you don't know that song, you're not, yeah, you need to. What's that it, what age is your audience? Do you know? Mm, the around 30. Mm, yeah, so they should know it, shouldn't they? I think so. the, the age of the podcast that Darcy and I have is um, around however old Paul is, because he's the one that we know listens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Paul from Humane. Yeah. Um, but like, did that, did that song spread across to the America? Uh, it came from America, you know, didn't it? Did is, it? It not, is it not an American song? Oh, Lou Vega oh, just sounds like the name of an American guy. I don't know. Maybe it's just a European person that we're like, It might be European, absorbed. yeah. Mm. Yeah, it might be European. Yeah, I think we everyone just... needs to name their press at least, if not all their arms. Yeah, well, I, 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 I like naming things because I, when I went to um, uh, Print Club London, when I did a um, flat stock printing course there, all the presses are named there and they've all got really cool names. I think one of them is called Cockney Badger, the one that we used. Because <laughs> just, just, it, was, it was all black and white and it was obviously all, always used in London. And yeah, <laughs> so I like having little names for things. Mm. I, do, I do most most things do have names in the studio yeah also it sort of look makes them special <laughs> yeah. yeah you think you think so some some things do get booted across the room even now and again when they don't work <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I think i think the olympics is too is too good to let not i mean not to revive we need to mm. make it a well if thing. you're listening and you want to be a part of it then send send chessie a message <laughs> <laughs> And you only get one email. Can you take some of the emails? <laughs> I'll take. I'll, I will take. A You'll proportion. put a spreadsheet together. I'll do then... a spreadsheet on emails, and I'll work out the proportion of who should receive how many emails, and yeah. um, but ba- ba- based on the amount you already have in your inbox. Yeah. So, so you have to have your name, the country, the pun name of the country, and what yeah. dish you're bringing to the party. No, I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't think you have the country. I think the pun name of the country yeah. has to stand yeah. up by itself. If it's not yes. obvious on, on first reading, yes. then you need to really start again. And none of the ones we've already listed. Yes, which are the best ones, <laughs> <laughs> particularly so Japan get... tone. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that one really, uh, really. I giggled like a drain when I read that one. Yeah, uh, we actually were laughing out loud every like time our WhatsApp thing was that day. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great day. It was a good day. We need to recreate <sighs> more of those. Thank you so much, Pab. Um, it's all right. So yeah, so people could tune in some Fridays, but just basically follow Dog Horse on Instagram because if so often you do go live on a yeah, Friday, it's dog dot horse. Um. You can also find me on the, the brand social podcast if you want to listen yes. to me, my inane ramblings. <laughs> um, on there, I just we just talk nonsense. I, I have I, same as it will happen now. The second that the camera goes off and the microphone's turned off, and I walk out of that door, I have no recollection of any conversation that we've had. It just <laughs> yeah. it happens, everything that happens in this room stays. This room is basically va- the Vegas of podcasts, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like it's like you're re-listening to old podcast episodes, is it? So they're just done. And then you when, forget that other people know all this information about you. I, I <laughs> genuinely like when when I listen back to the, the episodes of things that we've done, I have to listen to it not out of vanity or anything. It's so I know what the fuck I said. Yeah. I have no recollection of what's happened. I'll listen yeah. back to this and go, fuck are you talking about? Why are you talking shit like that again? <laughs> you're not supposed to tell people that. Em used to she was up on like listening to them so that mm. I wasn't saying stupid things but she's so far behind 
She, yeah, I I'm, can say I'm wherever few, I want I'm a few one. episodes behind, I have to admit. I think I'm up to, actually, I can tell you where I'm up to. I had Mike McCallowitz last week. Was yeah, Christmas I know. I was, I was um, that's on, um, well, my thing automatically queues them up. Whatever this app thing is that I use, it does a queuing. Um, that took me six months to book Mike McCallowitz. Six months? Six months. And I was given a 25-minute uh, window, a non-negotiable 25-minute window. I was like, we have a um <laughs> on the calendar. That's one button to press. We, we have a few that um oh I mean, I'm me two behind. Who's this one? Being the best printer in town. And also that's, oh, no, that's Jack. No, I've listened, I've listened to Jack's. No, that one's good. That's a great episode. I'm only I, I, only, I was, only I was away, I have to do. I was away on holiday, so I dropped the ball. But I've got a good one coming up. Yeah, this one. <laughs> yes, this one. <laughs> and then I, I've got Mike Mike Chong. Have you heard of Mike Chong? No. He's from America, and he used to like really, really back in the day. He used to do videos for Prince Arve. Oh, really? Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know him. Yeah, he's yeah. um very short hair. Yeah, Is that him or almost bald? Probably. I can't. I don't know. No. You've never I, seen a bald person. We watch his videos of people getting hair transplants. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you don't know what a bald person looks like. No, <laughs> now I just imagine them with their transplant on their reveal <laughs> where they take their blindfold off. They see their new hair. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, what's, is he is he doing 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 something fancy? Is he? Yeah, I think he's just very opinionated. He's been in like he's oh, got I can't strong. Wait. <laughs> he's got very strong opinions on lots of things. Like people block him from stuff. So Hello. Yes. Oh. Um, but then people block Corey from Floodway. So I've never <laughs> been blocked from sensitive. anything ever, haven't you? Um, and I would have thought, generally speaking, I'm quite incendiary with things I say, not on purpose. No one's ever blocked me. I think it's because I'm always laughing when I say stuff and they think yeah. I'm... <laughs> you know, they think you're nice. But yeah, no. um, that's because you don't come at it in any combative way or you're not trying to upset anyone. No, there's no, there's no point in me starting sensitive. a fight with someone because I'd probably just lose, wouldn't I? It's a tiny <laughs> little... You know, Jack from Old Elton's thought I was tiny. He thought we'd never met. We didn't meet until print. Right? I hope you're listening, Jack. Jack thought I was tiny, right? And the first thing he said to me when we met at the hotel, which that's making it sound like we're having some sort of loop. Yeah, right? yeah. We just happened to be staying at the same, the same hotel. Yeah, right. Um, uh, he said, Dr. Pav, how are you? Great to meet you. Like, face to face. He went, Pav, you're not short. Yeah. <laughs> which I think is almost the exact opposite of the first thing I said to you. when I went Yeah, there. you were like, you were very short. And I was like, mm-hmm. I know. I'm not getting shorter. I'm just getting like, <sighs> I'm just becoming a ball. Um, <laughs> but maybe it's just your camera angles that you're using because the camera's quite high on you, so it looks yeah, like it's maybe, looking yeah. over you like you're a. That's probably what it is. Well, we used to video call. Well, we still do video call quite a lot. Uh, maybe I just come across as a short person. I think I just come mm-hmm. across as a dude, and I'm not. I'm not tall. I'm not like six foot. I'm not six foot. Um, <laughs> don't know where I was going to go with that. But I'm not short. I think it's because I'm a because I'm Italian. He thinks that um, he just assumes that we're all tiny. Mm. And I'm not. I'm just a just a man. <laughs> you're sure. you're the second um, Luciano screen printer that I know. What what? Yeah, I'm only, you're, I'm you're only a... the first, so no, I, need no, to, no. I need to know the second one. You're not the first, actually, Luciano. The what? first Luciano in my life what? is around the corner. <laughs> he works for this company called CY Finishes. Actually, he got he got um, made redundant. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, I need, I need to. I've never met enough. I've, I've only ever met one other Luciano, other than my relatives that I'm named after. I, I was at school. I was, I'll tell a story quickly. I was at school, and um, this girl at school on my first day of school, she said, "Oh, what's your name?" I said, "Luciano." Oh, that's a nice name. I said, "Yeah, so I'm named after my cousin." And she said, "In all honesty, oh, what's he called?" Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Am I?" Am I the mad one in this situation? Yeah. I couldn't yeah. could quite place my finger on it. Oh. Yeah, I could do well in this school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This I, did, I, did, I did all right. I got a GCSE and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's quite interesting right. at the moment. I am getting all the CVs because we're hiring for the shop. And the only way I could think of, we just couldn't think of anything clever or be bothered to think of anything clever. We're just like, send us your CV just so we've got a name, you know? Mm. And then you're just reading everyone's back history, all their results, all their work experience. It's very, very fun to be nosy and look at all that stuff. How, mm. how are you going to choose someone? Because presumably by the time this comes out, you would have chosen the person. Yes. 
probably would have actually. I think we're choosing on Monday or Tuesday. Or we're Are you going to do like a, a Big Brother style, get them all there and like they'll <laughs> <laughs> evict them one by one from the shop? We're going for fight to the death. No. Great. Uh, I don't know, because actually some people who we know already, like, for example, there's like this guy who we we worked with this artist for like maybe 15 years and his son has always kind of been very um, confident, always come up to us on the market store, always just, he's like weirdly confident for a young guy. Mm. So yeah, he put, his, he put his CV forward. And then even today he came in the shop just to like make sure that we're aware of him again. So I don't know, some people that we already know, but need a, yeah, I don't know. It's tricky. The world of employing people is a minefield. Mm. I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah. All you, so. got, all you got to do is just sell enough t-shirts so that if for some reason there's a lawsuit, you can cover the cost of it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're actually, uh, we're doing a really cool shirt. And it's about a controversy that happened in the town. Mm. So you're not, no one's from, hardly anyone's from UB who listens to this, but there's this, the commission for this artist in Don Leon. I don't know. He's like, yeah, Dead on Leon. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, Don, how do you say it? Is it, is it Dead on Leon? Dead on Leon. Or, or Don Leon. Don Leon. I'm so probably we're asking, the best person to ask for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can see it written down. So we've asked him to do it. And his commission is that the, the, the story is like there's this swan that walked into a cafe and it's not the start of a joke. It's actually <laughs> happened in Newbury. <laughs> I'm so hooked. You had me. Yeah. <laughs> you had me at swan. <laughs> yeah, because we've got loads of swans in Newbury. They've got the canals, the main thing. Hmm. And then the swan apparently attacked someone. But then everyone thinks they attacked a councillor hmm. because then the Newbury council were like, oh, we need to get rid of all the swans. We're overpopulated. They're getting aggressive. It's like. Sorry, you want to drain the canals to get rid of all the swans, apart from one breeding pair. I don't know why you only want two swans. And then, um, yeah, and then they wanted to stop everyone feeding the swans because they're just getting out of hand. But it's literally our only thing. It's the swans the in swans. the canal. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what you need to call this. But they didn't, this, yeah. This well, needs to be your signet to ch- signet to tea. <laughs> doesn't it doesn't it yes oh my god i'm gonna put that we've got limited edition stickers but i can have signet to a t i'm writing that yeah. down for that's You're the welcome. best thing you've said i'm so glad i told you <laughs> that story thanks <laughs> you can <laughs> go for an hour and a half and the best well, thing is a bum <laughs> you'll see something clever at the end signet to t oh, oh. Yeah, i'm definitely using that so apparently he's gonna do some like you know aggressive swan kicking a coffee I, I wanted to put in there that he's stamping on a mayor's hat, but Em said that was that was going too far mm. and winding up the council. So we've taken that out, take that out. Don't need to go that far, but yeah, so, I mean swans are pretty vicious anyway, aren't they? I think they just can detect if you're a dick or not. I just mm. think they're a good judge of character. Do they kind of like razors in their mouths? Yeah, they're 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 basically the gangster of the bird world, aren't they? Mm. You know like how swans are they say swans when they're all calm on the water and then underneath they're going like fucking tens of a dozen and they're all yeah. like I'm I feel like the exact opposite of a swan. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's like oh, oh, I must do this, must do that. But inside I'm like you're an upside down swan. I'm an inside out swan, yeah. Whatever the yeah. whatever a swan back uh, inside out Nua- swan that's I'm, I'm, I'm a noas. Yeah. Noas? Nors. Nors. Oh, I'm a nose actually. I've been described as that before. <laughs> do, you, do you do you want to know my only fact about swans? Which I'm listening. Is, you had me at um, fact. Yep, six adult swans eat as much grass as a cow every day. As in the weight of the cow, or how much no. grass a cow eats? How much a cow eats? Six ad- six swans eat as much grass as one cow. That's a lot of grass. I, I'll be yes. honest with you, until you said that, I didn't even know swans ate grass. I know. But they just go underneath and they're eating the kind of weeds and shit from the bottom. And then oh, you the, oh, the wet grass. That's why you don't see it. That's why you never see it. They're hidden. Yeah. yeah they're, they're hidden they're from. Heads. Yeah. Oh, so they're going under and they're eating the wet grass. The weeds and shit. Yeah. The weeds. And then 
They do come out and eat the normal grass as well. I know they come out of the water because they're not fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, like, <laughs> they, they do walk around and eat normal grass as well, like dry grass. So they do, they do grass. Me, I don't think I've ever seen a bird eat grass. Mm. I know they eat like berries and things. And seagulls around here, they just eat fag, <laughs> fag ends and um, like barbecue leftovers in each other. I have actually seen a, a seagull spear a little sparrow and eat it. Um, you know, I've, I've never That's seen them horrible. eat grass. Yeah, the seagulls around here, they got fucking tattoos, they smoke, smoke 10 a day. <laughs> <laughs> some of them like zombies because they've had that um, fentanyl or something. Yeah, I mean, there, there's some. I mean, there's a seagull around here that's only got one leg, and he's probably the scariest seagull of the lot. Yeah, he lost lost his leg, and he was, I don't know, probably working some fish trawler boat and got caught yes. in the. <laughs> oh. I wish we had backstories. We could just download what experiences they've had. Of animals. Yeah. Man, that would be cool, wouldn't it? You're like, how did he lose his eye? And then it just rewinds and sees how he lost it. Yeah, <sighs> there must be yeah, a bit animals. Animals do lead interesting lives. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, I do love an animal. You can, you can like, basically retire like, like, now. I like anyway. butterflies. Look, I've got yeah. butterflies. Okay. They're actually Are not they real ones? No, no, they're oh, little they're, na- they're, they're little naked people. <laughs> <laughs> the, all the all the they're all like uh, copies of actual butterflies. Yeah. For the listener, there's a <laughs> yeah. poster, a, a, a print behind me. And it's actually the the butterflies are printed on the glass, and then oh, okay. that and then that there's a that's the shadow you can see. But the little the little bodies of the butterflies are lots of different naked people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Imagine how sick that is, really, if you think about it as a species. <laughs> we've gone and we've got other species yeah. and just pinned all of their naked little dead bodies up yeah. in an arrangement because it looks pretty. Just, just to look pretty. Yeah. The only naturally blue thing on the planet is a um, is a butterfly, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. It's the only thing that's naturally like, actually blue and not just like a little really? a light purple. Even yeah. in plants, yeah, there's no blue plants. Blue isn't a, a blue isn't a natural color. Hmm. Think, That's name really a blue plant. Go on, name one blue plant. Don't say bluebell because they're purple. What about uh, the roses in Tesco that have been dipped in dye? Have you that seen? doesn't count, does it? What is that all about? That's so gross. If ever there were another reason for me not to buy my partner flowers, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than just never remembering to. Yeah. <laughs> We haven't even got a vase. It would have to be in like a sawn down bottle. You got a nice, um, you got a nice, uh, was it a, I don't know what sort of plant that is over your shoulder. This yeah. is, I really like the name of this. It's, it's Dave. like nickname. <laughs> <laughs> it's nickname is mother in law's tongue. Oh, which is it's like, like, it's sharp, you know, cutting. In, what about the one next to it? What's the nickname of that one? My mother in law's actually really nice. Uh, what? This? Yeah, that one. No, the, other, the one, the one, the other. That's you fake. can't have all these. Well, th- this is uh, this is. This the, one's fake. So I don't know what you'd call it. All I have here is this is a shoe tree. <laughs> yeah. It's got shoes on it. Yeah. And then is that your bed with an Epson printer on it? Uh, is this, that? this this bed's actually going. This is going to be my stock room for the time being. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, but the, um, Amazon was selling these fifteen hundred Ws on on um on Amazon. Obviously, Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> But ridiculously cheap. I bought one new. They're selling them on eBay. Amazon is selling them on eBay. Yeah, they, I, they, I bought this because I've, I've already got one of these. Someone mm. put it up on one of the Facebook groups. And I paid more for mine second hand than I paid for this one new. Wow. <laughs> I almost shit. bought three of them just to put up in the loft. Yeah. It's Mate. another It's another case of not hating the variable change. Like if I ever have to change printers for any reason... I'm going to be devastated of having to like spend days dialing all my exposures in for the new print. I know it's really sad, but for the new like print um, yeah. opacity and that. And yeah. So when, when an opportunity comes to spend some money and potentially, yeah. so I just know what's going to happen is two years from now, I'm going to be running a job and it's going to be a last minute and it's going to be a last minute job, but I've agreed to do to someone for silly money. And then I won't want to let them down. And then the, that printer will die. And I'll yeah. go shit, and it will die at like three a.m. And I've got that sitting in the loft, and I could be yeah. like, mm, "Well done, past Pav." Sometimes yes. you've got to be nice to your future self. That's true. This is um, one of these times. <laughs> yeah, 
I we constantly have a few thousand pounds tucked away just in case that printer dies yeah, and you I have can't to. revive it. You um, have to. No, I'm you're quite the, you're like the you're like the Epsom whisperer now though, aren't you? I'm pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Epson, Epson, Epson. This episode is sponsored by Epson. <laughs> <laughs> Can you I imagine? He'd save a fortune. Yeah. I know. The, yeah. The, having yeah, dialing in all the computer printers and stuff is another question I get asked an absolute shit ton. Like because we, you have to have it all compatible, and then printers are going in and out, and drivers don't work. And if, if, a- if any new printers are listening to this and they're worried, they're wondering about dialing in their exposures and this and that, the only person that can do that is you, because your setup is vastly different to everyone else's setup. You change mm. one thing, and the whole thing falls apart. It's like a like a tower of dominoes. Mm. Not the pizza, the actual <laughs> the, the, the the octogenarian toy. Um, <laughs> The little bricks. You should yeah. know about the little bricks. Yeah. So um, yeah. Yeah. If you it's if true. you if you need yeah, dial it in yourself. There's plenty of plenty of resources on doing it. <laughs> yeah. Write loads of notes so you're not just faffing around. It amazes me how many people don't make notes on stuff. Mm. I've got like a the proper notebook. I've got a notebook by the this is a little print tip for everyone. I've got a notebook by the exposure unit. I've got a notebook by the tunnel dryer, and I've got a notebook where I mix my inks up. And mm. they will have like dedicated notes for things in there, like tunnel dry speeds and things for certain jobs and this and that. Yeah. No, mm. that's genius. Because otherwise you're just making the same mistakes every single day. It's like you're on yeah. the Truman Show of shit. I've, the, ma- the I've shit made a lot Truman of mistakes show. in my time and I'm trying to mitigate that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to learn from my former self. <laughs> well, yeah. Your future Pav will thank you for it. Yeah, future Pav. He's a good, he's a good guy. <laughs> He will be. Yeah. <laughs> if he's still dude. here, if he's still Very here, quick puns. he might have a horrendous speedboat accident. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you never know. Well, now I can never go on a speedboat, can I? I can never no. go on a speedboat now. I've said that. No, it's and your other wheels problems. probably come come off as well next week. So. <laughs> Super glued them on now. They can't come off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you very much, Pat. You'll oh. definitely see the signet signet. Shirt, t-shirt. I'm gonna, I have to send you one now because you've earned earned a shirt. It's and great, it's isn't printed. it? It's yeah, a great name, piece. isn't it? It's yeah. I'm really pleased with that. It's some of my best work. It's, it's <laughs> worth you having me on just for that, wasn't it? It was. It was. <laughs> I was just waiting for the perfect fun, and then then we could be done. I can go to dinner. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> well, good luck Thank with the shop and everything. Thank you. I'm sure I'll yeah. catch up. We speak to you at some point, anyway. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Easy. See, see you on your next live. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know when it will be sometime. Okay. Keep an eye out for me. I'm the, the bald guy with a white beard. Okay. <laughs> Cheers, pal. Cheers. All the best. Bye. Bye.